City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at Consolidated.com. Hello and welcome to City Spotlight. We're putting a bow here on Season 9 with a two-part finale. These two episodes to end Season 9 are on a single individual. In our first City Spotlight Person Spotlight, we are featuring Jack Finney of Neoga. At the time of taping this feature, Jack was an 8th grader in Neoga. Jack is a multi-sport athlete competing in the sports of baseball, basketball, and track and field. You've learned how fierce a competitor Jack is through interviews with Jack, his parents, and one of his athletic coaches. Part two of this City Spotlight Person Spotlight will conclude this feature on Jack Finney and will conclude season nine of City Spotlight. And this episode to end season nine of City Spotlight is our 200th episode on City Spotlight. We thank you for watching here on City Spotlight through nine seasons as we've covered communities across central and southeastern Illinois. And now enjoy part two of our City Spotlight Person Spotlight on Neoga's Jack Finney. I'm a huge proponent of playing everything. Um, I, I told both of my kids uh, when they were in sixth grade, uh, my youngest is in sixth grade now, that you're gonna do all three sports. Whether you like it or not, you're gonna, you're gonna try it. And Jack did not want to do track at first. He's never been a big runner. And I said, just try it. You don't like it after sixth grade, you don't have to do it. I think secretly deep down, it might be, one of, it might be up there with his favorites. Um, I think he likes the camaraderie. I think he likes to go to different meets and meet different people, get to do different things, whether it's running or whether it's field events. Um, getting back to your original question on the, on, the, on the different sports, sports help you, you know, for, ba for basketball standpoint, it helps his agility, it helps his speed. Help, that would help with base running with baseball. Um, track, it helps him be in shape, which helps for basketball. So all of this stuff is all interconnected, and I'm a huge proponent of kids not spending nine to 12 months out of the year on one sport at this age, because you don't know what you want, and you gotta let your body develop. And so I'm a huge fan of it, and I love the fact that both of my kids do all three. So like, for example, when we're in PE, me and my friends are playing basketball games, like, like some of the girls in my class, like they get mad at me because like, it, it's just a game of PE. And I'm like, well, no, it's not. It just, like, like I have to win. And it sucks when I lose in PE. It, it sounds ridiculous, but I just hate losing. And even, and even if it's a game in PE, I just, I hate losing. Baseball's my favorite, by far. I just, um, my dad put me in t-ball when I was like five, so. If you're right-handed, you throw the ball right-handed, you have a glove on your left hand. Well, Jack doesn't have a left hand, so he's gotta have a glove on his right hand, so how's he gonna throw the ball? So what happens is a ball's hit to him or a ball's throws to him, he catches it, sticks the glove underneath his armpit here, holds it, reaches his right hand in, grabs it, throws it, puts the glove back on. and. It is very awkward if you're trying to do it, um, but he, it just, it comes second nature to him like blinking and he is so fast at it. I love watching him play various positions. I love watching him pitch. But that's the toughest part because he's got to hold on to it. He's got to do something that other pitchers don't have to do. They can, their arms can be free. He's got to ensure he holds his glove here as he throws to be accurate. And then as soon as he throws and strides out, quickly put it back on because there's times balls are hit right back at you. And he does it so fast, it's so amazing, and I get more compliments from parents, kids, coaches, you name it, about how fast his transfer is, um, and it's really fun to watch. He doesn't even have to think about it. I mean, there's plenty of times as he played with new teammates where they're playing catch with him and they're waiting to throw the ball, and he's like, what are you doing? Like, I'm ready. And they just, they can't believe that he throws it and it's, it's just effort, effortless. Um, and so, yeah, 11 and a half years, it, it becomes second nature. Like I said, it's like blinking. Right, 
ックが Go, Ty. Good boy. Let's go, base hit. Two pitches, two bags. He is super competitive. He hates to lose. Um, we haven't always had the most competitive teams. Um, as we got older, his teams got better. Um, he is a very good defensive player. He's a pretty good pitcher, and batting's where he's always struggled, right? Um, batting is tough anyways, but trying to swing a bat with one hand is very difficult. Um, so he's always really struggled with it. Um, not just from a power, but just consistent contact. Um, we worked on it a lot over the summer because he played a lot in junior high in seventh grade, but he got DH'd for a lot. And for good reason, as coming from a coach, there were better hitters on the team, and so they should have done that. Um, and he took that to heart over the summer and worked at it. Um, and this past year in eighth grade, the baseball team was very good. They went to state for the first time in, since the 80s. Um, and he, I think, was the fourth or fifth best hitter on the team with average. And he's, he's never done that, ever. So. He saw all the hard work he put in in the summer paid off, and um, he's taken that to heart going forward. He's always been a defensive-minded kid, and has always been, well, I can't hit. I, I gotta figure stuff out. And I, I told him as a coach, older you get, when you get into junior high and high school, you gotta be able to do both. They won't play you if you can't do both. And so he took that to heart, and he's really improved on it. So from a coach standpoint, um, that's one thing that he's gotten much, much better at. We were up one nothing, and it was like the bot. It was a, it was the bottom of the fifth, and we only had one more inning to go. So our right fielder, which is a good friend of mine, Braden Ray, he was. Um, th this was his first year playing baseball, and he was playing, and he was in right field, and he was playing all the way out to the fence. And our second baseman was like cheating, like up toward towards the middle, because that guy hit the ball up the middle earlier in the game. And the ball was, there was a pop fly that was hit right in between the right fielder, the second baseman, and the first baseman. And it was right in that area. And um, I just ran back. I was looking, I was looking, I was looking, and I looked down to see if my footing was right. And I looked back up, and the ball wasn't there anymore. So I started to freak out. Then like over the bill of my hat, a white blur just came out of nowhere, and I sticked my glove out, and somehow I caught it. but. Um, if I but if I wouldn't have caught that ball, they probably could have. They they would have tied the game up, and who knows if they would have won or not. So my brother, he um, he can be a little bit lazy sometimes, but when he wants something, he'll do whatever it takes to get at it. Like he thought he thought um, a kid that was less skilled than him was playing over him and I'm like well if you want to show our coach that you need to work at it so I helped him work and I say around around playoff time he he was our second baseman because he's a bit too slow to play the outfield so yeah um, he was at second base and I was at first base and that was just fun it, it, it was a great experience having him right there our um, junior high baseball team um, we did pretty good first um we um we went like 18 and 6 i think and um 
we um, we were supposed to have a regional championship at um, at Cowden, Herrick, Beecher City, but we couldn't because it rained out. So we get so we got to play the regional championship at home on our home field, and we were hosting sectionals. And kind of what motivated me and my teammates as a team was our coach said, whether you make it to sectionals or not, we're hosting said sectionals. So you either be out there playing or you're going to be the grounds crew for the other two teams. So make that choice and we made that choice. That was the second time since 1986 junior high boys team has made it to state. And it was just a great moment and like nine months before that moment our high school girls basketball team went to state and we had success there too. But I just think like us growing up playing park ball together, like just playing as a team, we just know how to play to play with each other and, and it worked out. So we played in a tournament his travel ball team did last year in Rantoul. They were giving out these like badges, it's like an MVP thing to go to Crown Point, Indiana and um, the opposing coach gave it to me because he said his brother had one hand and he knows what it's, he said his brother knows what it's like to go through that and stuff. So. He gave me one of those, so me and my teammate, Dominic Ashley, he goes to Dietrich, he's a, fresh, he's a freshman, and we went to Crown Point, and um, we had fun there, it was, it was a great time, and um, after that, they give like more, they give you more selections to go to a, a bigger place, so they picked two people from each team there, and me and my friend Dominic, um, we both got that selection. Him and a few teammates um, went to the regional one. Um, they had some former baseball players there. A lot of really good kids, a lot of really good baseball players in his age group. Um, so it's basically a whole weekend thing. And then they evaluate you and see, they look at your attitude, your leadership, your baseball skills, kind of what you bring, they, the whole gamut. Um, and lo and behold, Jack got invited to the national one. Um, honestly, coming from a dad and a coach, it surprised me both ways. But as I talked to a few of the coaches in Arizona, they looked at more than just obviously talent. Jack's a good baseball player, but there are a lot of really talented kids. Jack showed a lot of other things, and that's what I've tried to instill in him, that he's gonna bring that. Um, so we get to go to Arizona, and there were a lot of really, really talented kids. Uh, he played in the 14 to 17 year old group, so I'll call it the future high school group for him. Um, he did very well, um, competed, swung the bat well, played really good defense, uh, really enjoyed it. Um, and, uh, you know, it was something that he wasn't sure he really wanted to do. Um, he felt kind of weird about it. Um, and I told him this is a once in a lifetime opportunity, bud, take advantage of it. And he did, he met some, some people that he's friends with now that he stays in communication with and it was, it was a really good experience for him. I was the only kid with one hand there, so that was a bit different. And um, they like split us up to like four teams. Um, and I had a bunch of kids, I had like kids from Indiana, even from Illinois, like half of my team was Indiana, Illinois, I had a kid from North Carolina, California, Texas. I think it was like New Hampshire too. But I just, I, I got to meet a lot of new cool guys and I stay in contact with two of them. And one of my teammates was from Canada, so. Yeah, so uh, Jack's coach, uh, former Major League Baseball player, Ronnie Richardson. He was actually, um, right now he is a minor league coach for the Rays. And um, he and Jack really hit it off. Um, and, uh, you know, Jack got to talk to him a lot. He did a little interview segment with him. Um, and, uh, no, that was, that, was, that was probably the highlight, I would say, for Jack, just getting to meet him and talk to him about um, things that Jack needs to work on. Um, and a lot of it was stuff that I've been telling him and his coaches have been telling him. But it comes a little different from a major league, former Major League Baseball player telling you to do it that has actually gotten to that level to say this is what you need to do to really compete um, and get to where I got. One of the things that I found to be very interesting was his ability to pitch. And I thought, okay, if I were the baseball coach on the other team, would I, would we walk up there and bunt 10 times to see 
And when I saw a team try to bunt, he fields the ball, he has it out, he's got it thrown to first. Uh, I watched him play uh, maybe in the sixth and seventh grade over at the junior high, and he played second base. And I thought, this will be very interesting to see. Nope, holds his own. And it's, uh, I had witnessed it playing college baseball. I saw a gentleman that at the plate in the outfield, amazing. And the fact that he has some athletic ability makes him more useful than he can be in different spots. Now, I'm not sure what it brings. However, it's just nice to know that uh, he's got some work ethic, he's willing to, and some knowledge of, of the game. Makes life pretty easy and he's one of those kids that you're just not going to tell him that he can't do something because he's going to okay. prove you wrong. So looking forward with Jack, I, hey, maybe on, a different set of eyes, maybe I can provide something to make it a little bit easier for him and we'll see what happens. But, you know, I, I, I'm not going to count him out. All of these camps and the situations that Jack has experienced because of his limb difference has been benefited him in so many ways. Um, problem solving skills is the one that I see every day. When he gets up in the morning to get ready for school, he's got to brush his teeth, two-handed activity, toothpaste, toothbrush, he's got to get dressed, which is zippers, buttons, um, he's got to get ready, you know how you go to the bathroom and you do your hair and do all that stuff. He's got to make breakfast, he's got to pack stuff for practice, he's got to pack stuff for lunch, he's got to get his backpack together. Before he even leaves the house for school, he has problem solved more than I probably will all day. And he just does it with such ease. And there are a lot of times it could be very easy for him to say, you know, I, I just, it's batting and baseball is hard. I tried it, I gave it a shot. I'm just going to move on. It's just not for me. There were lots of times he could have said that. He could have said, you know, I, I can't rebound a basketball. You know, you got to jump up and do it two-handed. He could have said that, but he didn't. He figured out a way to actually do it. And I think all these experiences has just given him so much adversity, problem-solving skills. I think it's helped him mature a little bit quicker because every single day of his life has been problem-solving. And his never give up attitude makes him a really great leader. And I see that a lot, not just in athletics, but in daily life. You know, you're not, you're not gonna always, the game isn't always gonna go the way, you know, we've all seen some baseball games go sideways. And, but that happens in life too. You know, you, Jack is a child that was born into a world that's not created for him. So the world isn't made for people with one hand. So every day since the day he was born, it's been a battle and a challenge. And I think that he just approaches everything in life that way. Yeah, it's a challenge, but eventually you figure it out. There's so many things that he just, he figures out. Like we don't, we struggled as young parents, Jack being our oldest, how to handle this. And I mentioned earlier that the camps we went to, yeah, Nubability and Camp No Limits, Wounded Warriors. We met so many families that just were like, you just, you gotta let him be. You gotta, you gotta let him work his way through it. Help him when you can, but don't baby him. And so we took that approach. And there's others that don't take that approach and that's, that's what they do. But for Jack, it was always, you figure it out. Because we're not always gonna be around. And that's what I'm most proud of is the fact that he just doesn't give up. He doesn't, he sees something, he'll figure it out. A guy that will, when you're in a huddle, will say, hey, I think we can. That's kind of interesting. You know that a kid is willing to speak in the huddle and that says volumes about. Definitely has gained a lot of confidence over his, in his time here and you know, you kind of you kind of look forward to. I'm in pretty close contact with the high school basketball coach, and we talk about, hey, here here's where you're at, and these are the things that we we see. And you know, you you look for someone who's not afraid to. Hey, sometimes you you got to get a message to the group, and you can send it through that guy, and he'll find a way to relay the message. And, 
I wouldn't consider me like the best. At, I'm not the best athlete in my class. I'm not the best at one of the, at maybe any of the sports I play. But like, so, I'm not pointing anyone out, but some of the things that my coaches told me, like Coach Hacker and my dad have told me and other people have told me like, like when we're down in a game and we're, we're losing, like he says that like I'm the one that is like, come on guys, you got this. Just get the team up and like get the team on, on a rally. Um, what kind of an older brother is Jackson? Now that is a loaded question because it kind of depends on the day because they're both, you know, tweens and teenagers. But um, it's sometimes I think it is hard for Jude to be Jack Finney's little brother. And, um, but he, he does great. Jack is always there for him. He's always supportive. Um, he, he always, sometimes in a very subtle way when Jude's like, oh, I don't want to go practice. It's so hard. Jack will be like, hey pal, like, you know, I do it with one hand. And then Jude immediately is like, okay. So, um, <laughs> you know, it's just, it, it's, it's, I think it's hard for his younger brother because he can never get away with not doing anything because his brother does it all. So that's got to be difficult. But he's a great big brother. They have a pretty good relationship. Sometimes I'm in the backyard like playing wiffle ball with my brother and he's like up like seven nothing and he hits a home run off me. He's like, you suck. And then he doesn't hit the ball the rest of the game because I, I actually start to try because I hate losing. But yeah. I had a gentleman stop me after a basketball game this year. And I'm not sure maybe kids quite understand how hard and how much time he has to put in. But I, I had a gentleman, and in fact, multiple people during the course of the season stop and say things like, you know, my kid comes home and complains about not getting to play, and that young man right there. And I, I said, yeah, that young man right there. He'll put the time in. And they're like, well, I wish that my kid played as hard as he did. And those are kind of things that you walk away from. And number one, it's, it's not me. He's got a great support cast at home. His grandparents, his parents, uh, I mean, they're in the bleachers every night, home, away, doesn't matter, they're here. And the fact that, uh, you know, if, if a kid is, worried about how much time they're getting in a basketball game or, or time on a baseball or time on a track. Take a look at this kid and see that if you put some time in, look what great things can happen for you. And I, I hope that people that watch this kind of look at it and say, okay, well, we're mad at the coach because our student doesn't get to play or take a look at this young man and, and he's not letting anything hold him back, so. Whenever Sean and I had a family and we were kind of thinking, you know, long term, where do you want to settle down? Everything just kind of worked out with employment and we were very fortunate to be able to move back to my hometown of Neoga. We were very excited about that. Really um, enjoyed the small town atmosphere. I knew that the school system was great. I knew that the level of support would be phenomenal. And when Jack first started school, that comes with a whole new set of challenges. Um, you know, it's hard for those of us that know Jack to see him as challenges because he just figures everything out. And as ridiculous as it sounds, I often forget he has one hand. And his friends and his teachers often forget that. And there's been situations where like, oh, yeah, that's right, I mean, you know, we gotta figure this out. But setting up what's called a 504 plan, which is a plan for the public school system that if there are any two-handed activities that are assignments, if Jack should need any sort of, you know, adaptive service to make it happen, you know, they are required to do that. And you go to these different support, I go to these different support groups and these different camps, and parents have such a hard time with that. They are constantly battling with educators and teachers and administrators to get the 504 plans to be followed, to get their child what they need. And when you have a limb different child, you instantly become an advocate. And so these 504 plans is one of the ways that 
Jack has learned to be his own advocate as well, because a few years ago, I started bringing him to these meetings with the teachers and be like, okay, you know, one of the things when he was in third grade, we added a technology curriculum, which was great, but suddenly one-handed typing entered our lives, which is something that we hadn't really thought about. Um, you know, building a science project, that's a two-handed activity. He figures it out. Um, driver's ed, which for so many reasons that, that has me so stressed out, but he's gonna start driver's ed in the fall. One-handed driving, you know, you're supposed to hold the wheel 10 and two. You know, clearly he can't do that. So those are ways that we're gonna have to navigate and make it work. And there's never been a problem in school, ever. It's we've just kind of figured it out. The technology teacher had the one-handed typing thing figured out before I had even realized we were gonna have to worry about it. So um, everyone's been always supportive of Jack. Like, it's, it's just, it's who he is. And I've never had to advocate super hard or have any problem with anybody supporting him or giving him the help that he needs. And I just gotta give our school district kudos to that because it's not something they see every day either. You know, they've never had a one different child come through the school system, so they're figuring it out just like we are. And now we've set the road for other kids down the road that come through there. There's a kid who lives like a block away from me. He's like, he's in kindergarten and he has the same disability as me. He has one hand and um, I, I would hope I'm a role model for him because I know like if he's ever like having trouble, he can talk to me because obviously his parents don't know what he's going through and like, like that's something he's, he's lucky to have. He has someone like 30 seconds away. He can just go down and talk to him whenever he needs to. Had a baby. Hey. Hey. Had a kid. Had a kid. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. City Spotlight is supported by Consolidated Communications. CCI is honored to salute the cities and their leaders in the area, as well as providing TV, internet, and phone service to local homes and businesses. We live where we work and are proud to support the communities we serve. More information available at consolidated.com.